My name is Nancy E. Strout. I live in the United States in the state of Maine. Good evening, everybody. This is Gertrude Mache here in beautiful Melbourne, Australia. Welcome back to the Her Story TV and the Her Story podcast. Tonight, I am graced with the presence of yet another fascinating lady coming to us all the way from the United States. Welcome to our tribe. Please tell everybody your full name, where you're based, how old you are, and share your story with us today. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Nancy E. Strout. I live in the United States in the state of Maine. I am 64 years old. I'll be 65 in November. I am a Maine artist, author, wife, mother, grandmother, sister, aunt, niece, and I am an incest survivor, and I suffer PTSD. And until recently, about mm, nine years ago, I treated that PTSD with prescribed medications. I had fallen into the hands of a um, psychiatrist who was very loose and easy with prescribing medications to me. He had a medication, prescribed medication for every emotion. You have a bad feeling, there's something for it. And usually at abusive levels. And I didn't realize that. Uh, So what happened was I was at the age of 50 on 24 medications. I'm five feet tall. I weigh 268 pounds, maybe even more because that was the last recorded weight I had at the time. I live in Maine, as I said, and we get a lot of snow. I came home one day and the snow banking by my my gate to my house was about three feet tall and I slipped and I fell into that snow banking and I couldn't get up. And that was such an embarrassing, scary moment for me because I physically was too large and too weak to get myself up out of that snowbank. I managed somehow to do that. And then I knew I had to make a change and change is hard, but uh, things happened. The universe kind of provided uh, a route for me to go. I was seeing my PCP who I'd been with for years and was okay with all the medications I was on uh, because of course one medication gave me a symptom that led to another medication. And between my psychiatrist and this PCP, everything was just fine. However, I got uh, fibromyalgia and I also had burning mouth syndrome, two very odd illnesses that I was struggling with and my PCP was struggling with. And then that psychiatrist said to my PCP, why aren't you giving her pain medicine for this fibromyalgia? This offended her. She said to me, I am no longer going to be your doctor. And I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? So a doctor's office opened up down the road for me. And I thought, I'm just going to go to him. And so here I trudged almost 300 pounds, five feet tall. I had a box of 24 medications. I came into him and I said, I need to make a change. Can you help me come off one medication at a time? I was a diabetic, extreme diabetic, taking U500, the strongest insulin there is. It's five times stronger than regular insulin. I was injecting 38 units three times a day plus a sleep dose of insulin. So here I was a diabetic. I was using a CPAP machine. I had a wheelchair. I couldn't walk. I was getting injections of Uflexa in both knees every six months. I was a zombie and I was depressed and I was suicidal. I had spent four stints in a psych ward because I had sliced my wrist and I had never been suicidal really until I was on some of these drugs that I think gave me those suicidal ideations. So here I was, this big ball of wax going to this new doctor and he said, yes. Yes, he would see me once a month and we would talk about a medication that I would slowly titrate off of. I would also go mid-month to get weighed by his nurse. And I started counting calories with a loser that because my son is an example had lost 35 pounds counting calories. He did it the old fashioned way with a book that you count calories. I did the lose it app. I I think that's available worldwide. 
I did the lose it up, I counted my calories. I then also, because my brother-in-law was very large and he had joined a medically orientated gym. I didn't know those existed and he lost 60 pounds. So I, I was getting work on my back because I was so large, I had a bad back at a physical therapy place that also had a gym with a big window looking at the gym. And I saw these people exercising my size. I said, I can do this. And they were groups of five. However, my group only had two in it. So it was like I had my own personal trainer. I managed over a five year period to lose 135 pounds, come off 20 medications. At the same time that I had this new physician, I also knew something was wrong with this psychiatrist because he wanted me to go on Abilify. I had seen bad ads about that and I questioned him and he got really angry with me. I thought, I can't stay with him. At that time, the universe provided for me again. I had made a friend with a woman who was seeing Deborah Walton and I, I went to meet to see her. She had does somatic therapy. She taught me breathing techniques, tapping, um, she did guided imagery hypnosis CDs for me. I learned to meditate. She, in her, C, her guided imagery CD, should say, the body language. fun. I did little tricks to make it good for me. And you know, I stuck with it for five years. I lost the weight. And then I maintained that for four years, almost five years. That's harder than losing it. But I work at it. I, I have a support system. I have my therapist. I could never do this without professional help. I would never recommend anyone come off medications without professional guidance. So here's my story. I wow. wrote a book. I, well, I wrote this book. When I first started therapy for being an incest survivor, I went to an incest group, therapy group. And she would say, write your feelings in a journal. And that's the first time I was ever told to express my feelings in any way on paper, but I am an artist. So I drew drawings of how I felt. I have a collection of these drawings. My book, Once I Was a Child and There Was Much Pain, A Glimpse into the Soul of an Incest Survivor is a collection of drawings that that's tell you, this is the pain that caused my PTSD. Mm -hmm. This is a good book for therapists, people who want to just get in touch with what happened to them to bring out those feelings. So I had this book sitting there and I always wanted to tell the story behind the drawings. But mm -hmm. you know, I hadn't reached the time in my life to do that. I had to live my life. I had to weigh almost 300 pounds. I had to find this way to get out of it. And now I had a good story to tell out of the ashes. This is my new book, just published December, 2020. In it, I chronicle my, I touch on my incest, but not in a painful way, not in a triggering way, just saying, this is what happened. And then this happened, and then this happened. But by golly, I found my way back. And I described the tools that I use, which are breath work, tapping, yoga, guided imagery. Um, I just, I just try real hard to chill up. Oh, and here's a big thing too. I live in Maine where medical marijuana is legal. I use medical marijuana. That helped me come off a lot of the anxiety drugs. Because of my PTSD, I struggle with anxiety. But you know, I'm in a good spot now. I, 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 I didn't have friends. I was lonely. I was isolated. I joined Overeaters Anonymous after I had lost quite a bit of weight, I knew that I could probably gain it back. And I was afraid of that. So, and I had seen my cousin lose hundred pounds and gain it back. I joined Overeaters Anonymous, a 12 step program. And the 12 step program is wonderful in many ways because my parents were alcoholics. <laughs> so I have this wonderful 12 step um, life living in honesty. I have a, a higher power, something I can lean on. So between, OA, my therapist, my wonderful doctor, 
my supportive family, I found my way out of that hole. Oh, and I want to show you some of my art because guess what I did? I built a website. I'm not technical at all, but I figured it out. I, I asked for help and I'd say, oh my God, I'm nervous on the computer. They helped me. I have an unbelievable website, www.nancyestrout, or you could go nancyestrout.com. It will bring you to my website, which has my two books on it. My books are also available on Amazon, um, Barnes and Noble, and Apple Books, but also on my website if you'd like a signed book. And I want to show you my art. I've been painting crows lately. I'm a watercolorist, and I had them turned into digitalized so I could make prints to sell to people. Crows for me represent transformation. I am a representation of transformation. Anything can be done. My story is hope. There is hope for you. If you are in the situation I was in, I am no different than any of you. I'm not special. I did it. You can do it. Here's my art. This is a crow, one of my crows. Mm. This is this is my logo. Do your dream, because I, I am doing my dream. I had to learn how to handle the PTSD, the anxiety, without prescribed medications or food. Food was my other drug of choice. Let's stop right there, Nancy. You you have an incredible story. Just absolutely incredible. The odds you've overcome, the challenges, the hurdles you had to jump. But there is something in you that has made you write this book. I sense that you are trying to create a road, a path for others to follow who might be in the same place. Why is storytelling so important for us? Why are stories so important for us to share? Oh, my goodness. Because if you didn't see an example, an example that it can be done, mm -hmm. it's so hard to visualize or to imagine and to know. You've got to know in your soul, I am not a superwoman. I am just a normal average woman. I could do this. You need to hear this. People need to hear this. There's hope. Stories tell hope. You can change. Love you can that. Do now, you had a couple of health professionals prescribing you with medications, with drugs that got you to this point. Yes. If you could go back to that younger woman who didn't know any better, what would you have said differently so that you could have avoided getting to this point? A lot of people feel very disempowered when they're in the presence of health professionals Doctors act like they know everything. They've got the answer for you. What would you have done differently? What would you recommend to somebody who's in a situation like that? I would have immediately Googled the side effects of every medication because I started doing that. And that's what started getting my doctor angry. I'd question. I said, look, I had, I had pancreatitis twice. And it says I could get this from this medication. I, I started Looking at what could happen, questioning mm -hmm. and, and Googling and, and talking about the side effects. And, and maybe I don't want that. And maybe there is a holistic approach. Maybe there are other things and avenues I can try. Yes. Um, I would say, I would recommend, um, I would have liked to have found a somatic therapist, someone who does like the tapping, the breathing, the EFT, the accelerated resolution therapy. It's an eye therapy. I would, I would ask these questions, but I wouldn't know to ask the questions unless I heard me talking. That's another point for a good story, right? Yes. Uh, ask the questions. What kind of therapy do you do? Do you do accel accelerated resolution therapy? Um, do you do somatic therapy? Do you believe in tapping? You know, that like, do you do, do those kinds of things for the therapist? And then yes. for your doctor, you've got to be brave to say, I, I don't think I want to do that. That is awesome. That's very, very empowering. And looking for those alternative, alternative methodologies that don't involve pharmaceutical drugs. Right. And yoga and exercise. Oh, and, and, and when I had the fibromyalgia and someone said to me, exercise is the solution. And that's crazy. You're thinking, I, I can't move. I'm in a lot of pain. But you know, they were right. <laughs> Sometimes people are right. And you just got to trust and go the path. So I did do the exercise. And my fibromyalgia is so manageable now. Wow. What a source of inspiration you are. Well, thank now you. you have come out with these two amazing books. I love the way that you journaled with pictures because a lot of times not everybody can 
or is inspired to write things down in words. What was the inspiration for each of the pictures that you drew? Where did that come from? Well, it was the actual events. Um, I ha- these pictures are like, um, I'm going to show you something. Like here is, I always felt like I wanted to scream. Uh, that is called the scream within is deep mm. and long. So it was my, it was my feeling. It was just like, there's a screen for you or, or like events. Um, I lived at a farm where we were kind of, um, we weren't tied up, but we were locked up as children. There were all kinds of abuse stories. So my drawings were, okay, here's this event or here's this feeling that I can't handle it anymore. So you either write about it or you draw it, or you go pound on a sculpture or dig in the dirt, do something physical or get it out or draw it or write. And writing, you know, writing came more for me uh, as I was writing the book, the words, you know, at first I couldn't do words. I could just do art. But then when I was doing this book, I could only do it a little at a time. I say that to people. I, I would, I couldn't sleep well. I'd be up at one o'clock in the morning at two o'clock in the morning. And I had this desk dedicated to my work and I, we had no space in this house. So we got me this desk and I'd be sitting down I'd only do it enough. Just, just what you can handle. Yeah. And then I helped people to talk to about it though. You know, I could process it. I had that therapist. I love that. They say that you can write a book a 365 page book if you do one page at a time, one day at a time. Well, I know what else I'm gonna tell you the miracle. Not only did I do it like one hour at a time, um, I don't type. I hand wrote it. Oh, wow. my, I, I, God put me in a good place. I, so God is my higher power. I'm, I moved to this house, this new house, near in between my children, but it was very lonely. I didn't know anybody. I'd be walking the streets with my dog and I met this woman. I said, do you knit? And she said, yes. Do you want to join my church? That was the beginning of making friends. And I started a knitting group. So I did that. But then a woman moved next door to me. And that was my best friend now. My typist, oh. my editor, she 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 wanted to write a book too and has written one. And we were writing buddies. We'd each write for an hour. We'd text each other a little heart. We wrote, we did oh. our thing. And, and she would take my papers and I'd sit beside her and she would type them for me. Oh, wonderful. This book was meant to be there. It took a village to make this book. Yeah. Oh, and then a, a photographer, a professional photographer took this picture. A, a, a graphic designer designed the cover and they did it pro bono. Wow. This but was... every, everyone you needed to bring this into being showed up when you were ready to tell the story. Yes. And I could cry. I have goosebumps. Yes. Mm, yes. That is just you know, beautiful. That I want people to know about this book and not to be afraid of it. There's a review um, on Amazon where it's stated clearly that this is not going to trigger you. I was very careful, mm-hmm. but it's going to give you hope. You can see where I was, how dark it was and how I came to light. I'm in the sunshine now. And it's a beautiful day in Maine <laughs> today. <laughs> What a beautiful way to end our interview. So my last question for you is, if time was an illusion and you could teleport into your future when you're 100 years old, sitting in a rocking chair, reflecting back on how you have lived your life up to this point, what would you say to that older you? You know, even though it was really hard and it was really painful, it was meant to be because look where you ended up so much better. Oh, I am so much more peaceful now. I wrote my books. I got my statement out. I'm doing my art. I'm playing. Life is good. It was worth it. It was worth it. And, and if I'm 100 and I'm, I'm on my deathbed, I'm going to say, good job. I don't have regrets. Absolutely beautiful. Nancy, thank you so much. Your story is inspiring. I'm hoping that this video can become the light at the end of somebody's tunnel. I hope so. And you've certainly transmuted all of your pain into gold. It's a beautiful thing to see. It's a beautiful thing to watch. And thank you to everybody who tuned in today. 
you know, the Her Story movement is attracting some phenomenal women from right across the globe. And it inspires me to keep on interviewing and meeting these amazing women as they share, uplift, inspire, and motivate. So tune in again tomorrow, everybody. Buy Nancy's book, go on to Amazon, go on to her website. Let's support her, get this book out in a big way. And I will see you again tomorrow with yet another fascinating interview on the Her Story podcast and the Her Story TV. Have a fantastic day, evening, morning, wherever you are in the world. Bye for now. Bye, Thank you, everyone. Nancy. Thank you.